Hello there, it's Mike. And Katie. And this is episode 111. What are we talking about? Today, it's new movies. Say what? On this week on Cup of Rad. It's after Christmas, but before New Year's. It's the last episode of 2020. That's right. The last episode of 2020. And what are we bringing you? We're going to bring you some new episodes. New, new, new episodes. episodes, yeah. Yeah, that's Guess what, what it feels like. This new episode is a new episode. Exactly. 100% new, fresh. Apparently we're still coming down off that Christmas high. <laughs> Christmas sugar high. <laughs> sugar rush. <laughs> so, uh, did you have a good Christmas? I did. Excellent. I um, My new thing I, I, I was able to uh, finally rock that today was I got a Sailor Moon sweatshirt. And it's fabulous. It's an oversized, feels like I'm wearing a blanket, and it's so comfortable. Yeah, I found it at a skate shop. Yeah, which is fabulous. I know they actually had uh, Dragon Ball stuff there as well. Yeah. Um, they have a beery sweatshirt, and now I think you Tie-dyed might purple. need it because the sweatshirt's awesome. So, <laughs> um, I got a Flash uh, action figure. A yeah, there you go. You can figure. do like a little mini review. McFarlane yeah. Flash. What do you think of the McFarlane Flash? McFarlane DC Multiverse Flash figure. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually super stoked that I got it. I I saw it once in store a few weeks ago, and I'm like, yeah, I already have a Flash figure. I don't really need it. And then right before Christmas, I'm like kicking myself. Like, why didn't I get this? So uh, you wish to the great Jelly Fat Man. Jelly Fat Man uh, decided to be like, yeah, I know you actually really want that. And um, it's fabulous. I'm super happy with the articulation. I was I myself was actually able to pose it, which is not a common thing. Mainly it's like, Mike, do make this look cool. Um, And so that was nice that I didn't feel like I was going to break it and that I was actually able to. I, I, I had him, of course, run. That was an awesome thing because my figure that I do have is just too. Um, he's in a he's a statue pose. It's yeah, a Michael Turner. Yeah, and I, I love it, the style, but it just doesn't allow for any changing. And then this one, I was able to actually make it look like he was punching, so like kind of like slide, swinging yeah. back and sliding into a punch, and that was really cool. So I do totally need to get the grod so they can fight. That's already mine made up on that so, one. So Katie is sold on McFarlane Toys. Yeah, so that was really DC awesome. DC Multiverse. Um, so we need to sell off the Mezcos and just go all DC. Shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was uh, kind of my nerdism for Christmas. I got um, a couple other fun things, kind of self-care type things. I got some new awesome sweatpants. And um, yeah, I got... Uh, um, a really awesome pop that I keep looking at. It's Hello Kitty, um, done up as um, like monster kaiju. kaiju monsters. Uh, I love the whole line. I don't know why. I'm like, I'm not a huge Hello Kitty fan. It's adorable, but it's just like this is just really awesome. Uh, so I got the sea one. So she's dressed up in like this three eyed monster thing, and she has a boat, giant boat in her hand. Yeah. And, uh, it's adorable and weird. So, what about you, Mike? I know we are. Uh... I got the Super 7 Raphael. You gave it to me. Yeah. Uh, and guess what? It's just as friggin' cool as I'd hoped and dreamed. It splashed me with nostalgia. He was so happy. Uh, it is the greatest. I think it is my favorite out of all the turtle action figures I have. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the best articulation compared to, say, like the Revel Tech or even the figure arts ones. But the nostalgia alone, it's like they took that original figure, blew it up and put articulation in it. Mm -hmm. And it just it makes me feel like I'm like eight years old again. Right. Well, I couldn't I hold believe on the that. detail that was. All yeah. There. And the added detail, like all the scratches. Right. And the the, texture. I think that was my favorite thing looking at it was the texture of like the skin around the neck and the like the creases in it. Yeah. And on his uh, chest plate and everything like that. Like that was that's incredible attention to detail. Yeah. And that you know what? You know, what's really cool is the uh, the hands are pretty easy to put in and out. They're on a really short peg. Even the Thundercats are like this too. They mm-hmm. don't have a huge like nubbin that holds them in place, so you're not going to break them like I did your Sailor Mars. So that's really cool. So, I'm yeah, glad right. It yeah. shouldn't break. Yeah. Uh, nothing's nothing's worse than oh crap. 
<laughs> that was a sad day and I feel bad. It just snapped because they're yeah. so fine, right? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, but it, yeah, they don't feel like I'm going to like break the pegs because they're short and hard, mm-hmm. right? And they're not nearly as like a nubbin. It's more just a, like a simple plug. That's cool. The head was harder to get on and off than I was expecting. But um, yeah, I'm pretty excited for the figure. Like I, I'm sad that I kind of slept on wave one and wasn't able to get any of the others on wave one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely if you're a Turtles fan, it's something to to look into for those Super 7 ones because uh, I know that a lot of even the third party retailers are starting to sell out of them. Oh, OK. Especially for wave two. Yeah. Uh, so but yeah, totally worth it. Totally. And I can't wait for the rest of the, this series to keep going because it's just like, yeah, I feel like a little child again. Well, I'm excited too when, say, the Thundercat switches over to their factory as well to see the change in them as well. Because the the difference between these and the Thundercats, these ones, this one just seemed like a nicer yeah, nicer. Figure, yeah, because so. the turtles came from Super 7's other factory that they're using. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's where wave three of the Thundercats is going. Wave one and two is supposedly being made at the old Mattel factory. Yeah, well, not, not the old Mattel, but the, the Mattel factory that did the first few Thundercats. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting exciting. to see if there'll be a vast difference. Will those the wave three be far superior to wave yeah. one and two? Um, but it just gets me excited for all of the Super 7 product. Yeah. You know, it's just literally like, this is, I think, going to become my brand because it's nostalgia. So now the great harassing Katie about Toxic, toxic Crusader has begun. Well, Big Bad still has Toxie, so, you know, <laughs> it's just <laughs> something, you know, you know. Just, just I've got a birthday coming up. Yeah, you do in, in, a, in a number of months. But, you know, it's... it's... <laughs> Well, I'm pretty satisfied with my Dragon Ball collection and you know, my, even my my um, my Batman stuff and all that, you know. So it's like, where where do I where should I go where I can have the most nostalgia? And yeah, and that's nostalgia. just going to be waiting for Thundercats and Turtles all year. He's got. Stuff. Yeah, you and got Christmas already set for next. next I know year. I've already got stuff on order for Christmas next year. It's fabulous. Turtles and Thundercats, Wave Four, both of them already Christmas. have his birthday pre ordered too, right? Because you know, there's plenty of stuff coming. So. <laughs> but uh, I also got the Mando, which is pretty cool. Hasro, that was a pretty rad figure. Yeah. R- really rad figure. So um, I got some got toys. got a little baby child to go with yeah. it. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I had a good Christmas. Lots of toys. Yes. It didn't look like a almost 40-year-old's tree. It looks like his usual Christmas. <laughs> Just less graphic novels yeah. than there used to be. Yeah. But uh, that was a weird thing, not having discs either. We used to, usually would buy some sort of movies. And we've been buying so much less of them, right? Yeah, and less movies, less graphic novels. Yeah. So things are shifting. Yeah. For for high quality nostalgia toys. Yeah, exactly, right? But uh, hopefully you all had a fantastic Christmas and hopefully you got some really cool swag, especially, you know, exhibiting all your nerdisms, whatever they be. If anything, make sure to tag us so we can see some of your cool stuff because yeah. it's always good to see that kind of thing. You know, tag Cup of Rad on your Instagram photos or story photos uh, so we can check it out with you because mm-hmm. we, we want to see. We like seeing cool shit. So. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of, uh, well, you know, one of the reasons why we didn't buy as many DVDs as we have in the past is because every time now being up in Canada, every time I go into a store that sells DVDs, they only have Warner Brothers stuff. And it's the same stuff that they've had for the last three boxing years, <laughs> boxing day sales or Black Friday sales. It's like it's always the same the box. Cardboard sets. box. You're like, this is Warner Brothers and this looks the same. Is it? Dude? Yeah. Like I, they, there's no dates on them. So I think they just like box them up and bring them back out and go, let's see what happens. <laughs> So speaking of Warner Brothers, what came out on Christmas Day? So Wonder Woman 1984 finally was released to most of the general public. (laughs) If you're in the States, it was on HBO for free. Yeah. It's only on there for a month. So, you know, you can watch it part of your subscription. Uh, But then up here, we were able to uh, just uh, on demand through a cable provider uh, for a hefty price, but still cheaper than on three of us going to the movie theater. So, um, you know, I could stay in my pajamas. I could have a coffee. I could have a cat on me. Yeah. We're I good. was a pretty damn good experience. There was no one else that. talking in the room. Only you know? us. We're good. We could pause it when we needed to pee because did you know that movie is 153 minutes long? <laughs> it's a long ass movie. It is. 
It is a long movie. So, um... Wonder Woman 84. So that one, it, it finally came out. Um, it's been a while since we, we never get to watch. We I usually would watch, like, the first movie before we watch a sequel, but because of Christmas and everything, didn't bother with that. Um, but... I would like to say that I enjoyed it more than I did. I would like to say that I was blown away and I was just super excited to have another Wonder Woman movie. But I'm like, cool, another Wonder Woman movie. That was fun. And that makes me sad. Um, it wasn't horrible. I I enjoyed it. It was fun. There was some good times. Um, but it could have been so much better. And that makes me sad. Um, I really, I like Gail Gadot as Wonder Woman. I think she does a really good job as, as Diana Prince. I think it's not her fault at all. Um, I think there's there was just not enough action and the action that was there you would point it out it's all in the trailers it's all in the trailers it's all in the trailers so there was nothing new from the movie that was a surprise those three minute trailers showed you pretty much all the action yeah. in a 153 minute movie and and a superhero movie of wonder woman deserves to have more action and um you know, and you know, it's quite funny actually. Is Steve Trevor was a character that I really enjoyed in the movie. Like he was one of the best parts of the movie. Um, I think well, Chris Pine did a fantastic a job. job at the comedic timing in it. Right, like he it had, was like, really good. It was those breath, like refreshing breath of air. Whenever he'd start talking, because he was in such of awe of being he was in adorable. a new decade, yeah, like a new era, right? And but yet he was the most reasonable person out of everyone in the film well because he wasn't ditzy at all he yeah. was very very smart and he was also um in the action scene where they were driving the tank they he was decisive he just went and did stuff he yeah. didn't sit there and be like i don't know what to do you know the soldier part of him came out and he just went and did things yeah. and like that was very refreshing for a character mm -hmm. that had the comedic aspect yeah. normally he would he wasn't in a tizzy yeah um and I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, so I, and I, I enjoyed Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. I think oh, she yeah. did a great job. I was, I was worried boring. at first. I thought she was going to do the Uma Thurman thing. Yeah. Uh, with like Poison Always Ivy. Always understandably freak out. Uh, about that. When she was cast. But I think she did a fantastic job of, of being the nerdy to, you know, confident mm -hmm. very well, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed with the ending. I'm disappointed that... Um, that there is no hope for the villains of Lord and Cheetah really to continue on. That's even if it had given me a glimpse of a possible hint for something. Uh, it makes me sad when, you know, Cheetah is supposed to be her arch enemy and yet she's not Cheetah now. Two and, minutes, maybe. And it's just, you know, it... It was disappointing that they can't seem to figure that out and make an overall story like that. I mean, Marvel was able to have Loki in every single film, basically, and continue going on and change and grow as a character. And yet DC can't have a villain in more than a movie almost, yeah. you know, and and it's just it's sad when you see that type of stuff. You know, if they had given Lord Redemption and kept Cheetah, that would have been I would have been cool with that. Yeah. Um, and I, I like the message that was in uh, about truth and kind no of no shortcuts. Yeah, that was a really good message in it. Um, I think. But the more we talked about it, I was actually between the two of them. I'm a little frustrated with the um, with the way they took with Trevor dying in the first one. And, you know, she the sheer time difference between one and two. And she has her life. Remember, is, World War One was the first movie. Yeah, and this is eighty four now, and her life has essentially been on hold. She's still not fully out as Wonder Woman. She, you know, it was all still hidden. She so she's not a public hero, and she's still not thinking of anything but um, I said Pine of a uh, Steve Trevor. She's not thinking of anyone else but him. And she seems very recluse still. And to me, it's frustrating because it was the idea that, you know, she she came from this land uh, from Themyscira, shows up on Earth uh, in the land of men and has now fallen in love with relatively the first man she finds. And now is completely stuck on him. And I have no problem with her loving Trevor. 
Um, because that's in the graphic novels as well. Like, I mean, I was just reading graphic novel today where it's current times, Trevor's still alive. He never died, obviously. And, you know, they have a relationship going on. Um, but she, it took too long for her to still to try to be coming into her own. You know, she just, she hasn't been able to fly yet. And she's still so stuck on, on not being sure of herself. And it's been decades and she's still not sure of herself. And I think it just kind of cheapened her character a little bit. And I don't know, I'm not usually one who wants to stand up and like pull down the Disney princesses or anything like that. But like, how is, how is this movie helping create strong women or girls if they want to have that message they care so much about the strong women aspect and yet so much of her character is still being held back because she is stuck with that relationship and i'm it's a legitimate thing to be stuck in you know in a problem like that but i don't know it just i think i think it would be okay if you knew that there was going to be like six wonder woman movies but yeah. we, we I, don't know, trust, I don't even know if there's gonna be a third one idea, well there's right? gonna be a third one well i but, know but but if if i just watch that movie right yeah it doesn't i have not been able to really feel like damn this is wonder woman and she's like totally badass like she was more more badass than wonder woman in wonder woman yes like that is wonder woman is a far superior film yeah because there's so much more action right so this one but she I also say, stood up and she there was all those moments where she felt awe inspiring when yes. she walks across no man's land it, it was, was awesome just like, right Damn. and this just cheapened it right yeah. it's like she you went from her being amazing to her almost having too much humanity and she's lost her Amazonian spirit mm -hmm. because she's just she lost a love and now she doesn't know how to move on. And it's been decades and she's just stuck. And it's like, that's a very human thing to deal with. And I don't want to watch her to be a human. I want to watch her be a freaking Amazon. Yeah. And I think that's where I got I, I, it made me sad because I want to see her kick ass. I want to see her, you know, I want to see her sparring and fighting like that. I don't want to see her acrobatic and circus swinging through the air as she fights everyone because she never her, had her sword or her shield right her rope or not rope her lasso is a, a very very important weapon of hers but it literally was her only one you, you do think that, that they maybe they had the same kind of problems they had like in the 90s with characters where it was like mm. the first one they have they're like they have actual like weapon and then like the the mum groups and all that are like no they can't use weapons you know, they, they got to be more, you know, how can Probably. we... Probably. So dare now you, she's... How dare you tell our girls that they can have swords and shields? <laughs> right? So <laughs> instead, she, she literally just used her lasso the yeah. entire movie. And I, you know, what's funny is I, I could, I registered that watching the movie. And then I was, I was reading my graphic novel today and she's fighting and she's got her sword and her shield and her lasso all in one go. And I'm like, this is what was missing is she didn't have that because with those she has to be close and have that combat mm -hmm. and punch things and slash at things and you know that's the whole point of her shields too and you know she hates guns okay don't you that's why you have a sword you know apparently i was a little frustrated with the lack so we're finding out that katie didn't actually like the movie and it's probably not she's trying to be nice by saying it wasn't bad it wasn't bad i still think people should see it well, should they pay $30 if they don't live in America? I would have a hard time with that. Yeah, know. see? That's the thing, is that this movie, to me, set that precedent that if all these movies are coming and they're going to offer a $30 price tag to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. that I'm okay waiting until they drop down to the regular video on demand of six ninety nine. dollars That's yeah. basically waiting until they would have gone to video store. And that's that president that DC's movies have continued to be that way. And they're I keep not hoping, bad. Right. They're not bad. They're entertaining when you're in the moment, except this one wasn't necessarily fully entertaining. Kiddo sat there going, oh, my God, this is boring. Yeah, we kept we keep hoping for it to be different. Right. And like as much as I want to trust that some of the other stuff's going to be good. They, they they bring out a couple that you maybe enjoy. Like, I really enjoyed Shazam. I really liked Shazam. I think yeah. Shazam is probably one of the better ones that they made. It's yeah. not as sloppy, but Funko ruined the ending. Yeah. Uh, whereas this here, the marketing ruined the movie for me because yeah. it the trailers showed it was going to be an action-packed palooza. Yeah. And then we got into it, and I was like, well, we've seen that. We've seen that. 
Okay, well, now we're now we're talking for an hour. Well, Kiddo said it's basically it's more of a mystery yeah. than anything, which the mystery in the story. I like the story yeah. unfolding. I like that they were trying and I like the message that was there and the concept of it was very real feeling too, um, of, of human nature and our how greed corrupts and we don't realize what we really wish for. And we, you know, it's the, the problem of if humans actually had a magic lamp, we totally screw things up. Yeah. Um, I liked a lot of that aspect, but that is something that could be in any movie. I want what Wonder Woman should be able to give me, which is her being a badass Amazon and standing, definitely still standing up for truth. And in the hard being the person that stands in that hard position and says, no, this is not right. And I don't care if you think, you know, if you like me for this, this is this is the right choice to make. There was nothing wrong with the message. It was just the no. execution of the but length geez. of the film. Yeah. It could have been cut easily by 45 minutes. Yeah. It would have tightened up some of those scenes and allowed for, you and, know, I, yeah, I'm tired of trailers ruining things. Yeah, right? Like, you need to not watch any trailers. Like, okay, it's coming out on this date. Don't show me anything because otherwise you're going to spoil it. Yeah. You know, um, what I give props is, is that her costume is probably one of the more beautiful ones that she said, because it's not muted. It's yes, colorful. Definitely. There was that. It was bright. The opening, cool. the opening scene is fantastic with Thamascara. The, the, mm-hmm. the mall scene is hilarious because it's such a harken to the Linda Carter, you yep. know, Wonder Woman with the campiness and it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of like grinds a bit to a halt. I do love Diana Prince's fashion. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a highlight there right like every time she was on screen i was like i love her outfit right so it's like it, it hits that the stride where it's just like too few and far between for a, a movie to engage mm-hmm. because it loses that 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 drive and i pedro think pedro pascal did a good job because really, everyone did a good job it's the it's the plot the plot well, and i think and pacing. i think it was wrong for them to jump from world war one to 84 yeah. I think it was way too long. But see, now, now they're, talk, they're talking that, that the the next one is going to be our time, like modern time, right? They're going to make that jump again. So in all that time, with the changes that she has made and what she's learned about herself by the end of this movie, then I, I would hope that she is exponentially better. But she's like, as an Amazon, you're supposed to have so much prowess and already, you know, you know, she's supposed to so be the best there is to offer when she leaves Themyscira, she should be a much better at what she does. Yeah. And she should be an extremely good superhero by that. If it's in the future, you know, current times then. And I don't trust that they are going to show such an accelerated badass um, woman. You know, I don't want her hardened and like angry at the world. I want her full of love for everyone. And she was so withdrawn. And hopefully this one is going to show that because that part of it was a sacrifice. She, yeah. she, you know, the sacrifice for everyone, the greater good aspect. And that's an important part of her character. Um, but I, I don't know. It just, you know, as you know that it's going to still hurt her. There's you can't help but be somewhat bitter about something if you've because ne- she keeps saying I've never asked for anything. This is the only thing I want, and it's I don't know. It just seems a little bit too harsh to ask for the only thing she's ever wanted is the thing she has to give up for the entire world. And I, I don't know. There's a positive to it, but I don't know. I think they could get that same feeling differently. I, I, I know I'm being harsh on it because it's a character that is so precious. Well, that's to the me. thing is that they're, they're right there. But, that's the thing. It's, it's near and dear to your heart. Yeah, right? and it's, so it's, I, I know that. Um, but it, I guess it's like with you with Batman or Wolverine or something. There's just a certain core things that you really care wish about. You could see. And it's just like ah, it just didn't execute that as yeah. well as you think you could have, right? And so I wonder too if things will change, especially because this one had a bazillion producers and whatnot. If, yeah. if there was any hands in the bucket that kind of changed. Well, you it. said Patty Jenkins had said that a little bit, right? There was a there possibility was some, of a little too some much problem, executive yeah, problems. Yeah, some problems with Johns apparently as well, Jeff Johns. Um, so we'll see what happens. So you know, they they announced. I'll still watch the third one. They announced <laughs> they announced that the third one's coming out like two days after this was released uh, with Jenkins and everyone coming back. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, I don't know. They didn't say a date exactly. We're gonna fast track it, but she is also working on that Rogue Squadron movie, so that puts a bump in the timeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Like you know, 
as I say, everything about it, it's pretty to look at. Everyone is good acting wise. Like there's yeah. nothing that's bad acting wise. It's just the story needed to be tightened. Yeah. And it just there needed to be something else. And it does kind of go anticlimactic at the end because of what you had said. There was the idea that that she didn't go all full Wonder Woman. It's very, very soft. Yeah. Um, so you don't really get that superhero battle at the end. You know, one thing, too, it, I mean, it's minor compared to everything we've talked about here. Um, and, I, and with the first one, I did laugh at the fact of, you know, the final reveal of of Aries and everything was was ridiculous. But at least it had that mythology aspect to it. Right. Um, there, you still had a god there. And I was waiting for possibly a little bit more of a nod with the the stone you know you had that where it was kind of going down that route and you were kind of learning about some some of the mythological yeah. god aspect and all of a sudden it was just gone and that was a little bit of a letdown because i i like that it that was a mystery of like okay so what god is doing this and what's going to happen and then it was just like yeah so we figured it out okay we're done yeah no totally okay. but you know what if you enjoyed it you know all the power to you because yeah. everyone can enjoy different things of course and you know, it's definitely definitely a different chapter for it. It's it, I do think it's weak, the weakest of the Wonder Woman saga that they put out there. Hopefully they can course correct a little bit um, with some more action and excitement yeah. in the next one. Uh, but I, I believe that it's not worth the the thirty dollar price tag if you are outside of America. Yeah, especially I think you should wait because it might even be more depending on where you are in the world. Well, um, if it was just me having to pay for thirty dollars for it, I would definitely would have been yeah angry. So you know, so it, there is the beauty of say being that we're not really having theaters as much that uh, this can kind of help us set a precedent that maybe we don't jump on these ones right off the bat. Maybe yeah. we wait. You yeah. know, it's so, the reality of it. But uh, Wonder Woman eighty four, middle of the road, probably like a five out of ten. Yeah. You know, just it's I would there. like it's to. Okay. Say, I, I want to say more. A six. But the way I'm talking, apparently, it doesn't nope. come across that way. <laughs> so speaking of thirty dollar price tag, another movie came out this last year that we were really excited to go see, and we saw that it was going to have a thirty dollar price tag on Disney Plus Premium, Mulan, and we then also heard that it was going to be part of the regular subscription come December. So we said we'd wait because. All the Disney live action ones have kind of been so-so for us. Hit yeah. and miss very much. Uh, very few we've really enjoyed. Uh, so we waited on Mulan. And we waited and waited and waited. And we were like, you know what? We got new movies. Let's Christmas is over. We've watched enough Christmas movies to last us a lifetime. <laughs> um, you know, let's let's check out some other stuff. So we'd watched Wonder Woman 84. And we decided to check out Mulan. Yes. So... Mulan, the live action uh, remake, reboot, reimagining. Reimagine, not reboot. Um, no, reboot it. That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> oh, there's all those words. It's all re something. We're re. Another re telling of the story of Mulan. There we go. A different telling. Yeah. So. Uh, so there you go. You get to take this one. This is take this one. Um, okay. So, you know, what was funny was, is that when it started, it had some corn in it that was like, ooh, ooh. And I leaned over and said, it feels like the old animated was a little bit more serious yeah. than this. But then I got, got it out of my head that this, they literally says that this is my telling of the legend of Mulan yes. in the narration. And I was like, okay, so it's, it's, it's just the idea that this is just a fairy tale. Yeah, it's, Mulan it's only is a tall fairy tale, tale legend, you know, idea and like it's that, been right? told how many times before? You know, different different regions probably tell it differently. Yeah, right. So that's the idea. Where so so I'm watching it, and I was pleasantly surprised. I actually, I will say, I enjoyed this version of Mulan quite a bit, not more than the animated, because the animated is amazing. Because the animated has an issue. Uh, no, no, but just even no, the, just the nature of it, like oh, so yeah. much more serious, almost yeah. feeling. Oh you yeah, know? Uh, but. This version was actually pretty good. It was beautiful cinematography. There was very few scenes that 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 bothered me. Um, it was either real. I I enjoyed it. It was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. I kind of went in being more skeptic. Like I'm not quite sure. Well, I had seen people say it was trash and yeah. whatnot. And, and I, I really like, I really do love the animated so. as well. But I was pleasantly surprised. There was either like everything's really good or 
the only red flags were like seriously corny. It yeah. wasn't like this is dumb or irritating or long or anything. It was just like, wow, it's a little corny. Otherwise, yeah, it, it, was it was uneven. Good. It was yeah. uneven in its tone because like, or like when like the spider thing with the with the teacups, right? It was a, a little, little too much silly. Yeah. Yeah. And girl. then like, then you'd have these gorgeous shots of like the landscape and the armies marching and stuff like that and you're like yeah oh my god this is amazing and then all of a sudden someone's running up the side of a building um <laughs> you know it was it was uneven in in what it wanted to be almost i told mike i was like i want to learn how to run on walls and train like that he's like you can with a harness mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah harness your chi <laughs> through a harness but that's also too some of the filmmaking because it was like a kung fu i don't yeah. know the term movie um the martial arts movie well it's um, that idea of showing them too and everyone sees ninjas as as something terrifying that we can't be like yeah. and so that really was that extra bit right yeah so the, it was like there were some really good moments in the movie i was pleasantly entertained i'm not gonna rush out and watch it again um but out of a lot of the live action ones, this is probably one of the better ones for myself yeah. because I was entertained. There was only a few of those scenes like at the end when the Phoenix comes up behind her and she's got Phoenix angel wings. That was bullshit. <laughs> you looked over at me and you're like, what the? That, Both of us were like, oh my God. You know, that was... I say that, but I got a little. The, I got a little teary still at the end when you know when they all are are showing her reverence and acceptance and everything. So it's still the same reaction as the animated does, where it was. It was, and that's where it was. And good. that's what it's supposed to be, right? It still it made good. you feel like. It, and you know what was cool too is this. I liked that it did find its serious beat and it showed how hard she was really working, um, and how you know kiddo was kept saying he's like how sad it was for the uh for the witch and mm-hmm. and for Mulan the way that their women were were they're put in their place feel and how much they couldn't do and and so um you know you you really got that feeling of yeah. disdain that she would have had and and the complete and utter um disgrace that she would have had and and for them to overwrite that cultural aspect was so huge mm. and for them to accept what she had done um it was definitely emotional so they did a good job still of, of portraying yeah and see i think that was the thing that was weird was there was no like corny weird humor or anything like that it was just those choices in how they sped things up or they yeah the wire work or like some of the shots with some of the things that 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 pulled in the corn factor that like pulled it down a bit where you're like ooh yeah right so I did like though that they shifted any of the potential romance aspect um to the the connection that she made with a group of of men you know her her comrades there mm-hmm. um but that there wasn't any like I never had a problem with it in the animated but just the idea of it not being her superior mm. um and then that they didn't follow through we didn't show up with them and and sweep her off her feet you kind of hope that it happened at some point because yeah. to prove to her that um and and for him that there's there's guys that are more um that are not all just kind of um stuck in tradition too much yeah um but that that wasn't the focus of it right yeah. and it was her just being able to find a little bit more of a, a different type of person to talk to and open up about yeah but it wasn't the central focus of the movie yeah and uh so that was that was nice that it didn't turn around into that or something that it yeah. really was still just about the family and the honor and that that whole thing was pretty awesome so yeah would I have paid the thirty dollars for it? I don't think I would. Still, yeah. it was good enough to watch part of my subscription. I'm glad it's part of our subscription. I'm glad we watched it. I had a good time. I did yeah. not feel like I wasted, you know, the two hours that the movie was because I was entertained. Yeah. Um, well, see, it's hard for those price tags only because, you know, we're still limited. Yeah, we have a nice TV, um, but we're still limited with what we have you know it's opposed to if you're you're paying more money because i have a big screen and i have the surround sound and i'm supposed to have a clear picture and everything like that but you're dependent on if the internet service is deciding to lag mm-hmm. or or whatnot right and that's the thing that's frustrating when you pay such a big 
price tag for at home yeah. is you're not paying for anything of that extra. So then you have to kind of shift your mind frame of what you're paying for. Yeah. I mean, it definitely just changed the value of what you see. Yeah, no, right? totally. So, but I will admit being in my PJs, getting kitty cuddles, it was still nice. That yeah. makes it a heck of a lot nicer than having teenagers talking. Okay. Then there you go. You know, and smelling okay. other people's farts. Okay. Never mind that. <laughs> Sorry, I said anything. No, 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 no. I understand what you're saying, so. though. But, but I, you know, I'm glad we didn't jump on. Yeah. The I, um, but, but doing it in October. Yeah. Though, right. Yeah. Like I think I think definitely being part of the subscription. And look at that! Cool. You're free from having to me buy you know merch and everything now that I watched it and I would have gone to Hot Mulan Topic and, or to Wonder Woman. Uh, mainly both. <laughs> both of them. Um, no, well, Wonder Woman, I, I have the, for loving Wonder Woman so much, I have very little merch because all of her merch sucks because all they ever do is this giant gold W on a bright red shirt. And it's like, that's it. There's no actual There's fashion. There's no creativity. And, uh, for, and the fashion that they did bring out for the first one was like over the top too much, even for her universe, right? The one thing that I do have is my dress, which I love. No. And and nothing will beat that. But uh, but for like Mulan, because I remember, you know, I when they did have more of that. Um, and it was just like, well, I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't know yeah. what it really is, right? But uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, if you if you want to see something fun, I would say Mulan. It was. It, it, I did enjoy it. Yeah, it, it was a good time. I did also like how they um, brought in the concept of the ancestors helping her, mm. as much as it was the corny with the the phoenix at the end with that. Um, but still oh, I have no they, problem with the phoenix no, flying I, around and guiding her. Yeah, I know. But just that they did bring that in and they still had the ancestors in there because I know that was a complaint with the idea of not yeah. having the dragon and the, the idea. But it was still having a guidance system yeah. of some sort, right? So Yeah. My only thing was, was the weird behind her with the wings. That yeah. was a weird moment. Yeah. So. Final new movie? Disney Pixar Soul. Yes, that dropped on Christmas as well, mm-hmm. right? Um, no extra No pay. extra charge for that Directly one. Directly on your subscription from Disney Plus, which was a vast surprise. Yeah, I was definitely surprised um, about that. You know, they, they they brought out, it was the latest Pixar from Pete Doctor too, right? You know, he, he'd done all the their big hits. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also the, the main executive producer on everything now, you know, oh, okay. creative director. Um, he took over after they ousted Lasseter, right? Oh, okay. Because he's had so many hits. Yeah. Um, so Soul uh, is the story of a music teacher that accidentally dies and wants to get back to his body because he's got some life to live still. Well, because he's always wanted to be uh, like a jazz musician. Musician, He's always waited for that gig and be able to score that chance. And you know what I loved about this is that was all you knew really going into it. You know, that was one thing that I really appreciated is I like that. I'm not really sure what to expect from this movie. I don't really know what it's about. Yeah. And I can't wait to find out. The, That's the, what a trailer should be. The, the Yeah, the, the marketing on this was so far between. Like, right? It was, you know, you literally you saw him fall in the manhole. And then the next thing you knew that he was this little blue blobby thing. Yes, you're like, I assume he died. And I right? assume it has something and to do with And they life. never showed him getting back to his body. It was always just talking with that other blue blobby thing. Yeah. Right. So kudos on the Disney Pixar team for keeping it shrouded in mystery. For letting you find out by watching the movie. Yeah. And and making a damn good movie. Holy cow. This, I, is, this, this movie is, was phenomenal. Yeah. Out of all the three ones we watched, go watch Soul. It's got a lot of heart and it's got a lot of soul. <laughs> uh, dad jokes. Yeah. That's what you're here for. Um, no, Jamie Foxx did a fantastic job. Tina Fey did a fantastic job. Everyone that is in it did a fantastic job. The animators, story, music. It's a damn good movie. Well, and it's, it's definitely one of their deepest most profound like grown-ups films it was a beautiful piece of art yeah and and i I know you had commented that it you know this is one of those ones that reminds us that animation is just a medium it is not necessarily a kid's story it's not a genre it's a medium and um and this here was was something that was so deep as a reminder to us adults that um the way our, our our life can be um you know, so caught up in the idea of having a purpose or or a meaning of some sort. And push even pushing on our children. The, yes. That, that idea. Right. And and, that, you know, more of the more important thing is the the spark and the want to live life. 
And it doesn't have to be a profound reason to want to live. It can be as simple as a maple tree, you know, yeah. a seedling. It's it's just something that brings a spark of life to you. Mm-hmm. And and I thought that was like toys. <laughs> like Toxie. Uh it was it was so nostalgia. Beautiful, right? <laughs> um but I, I love their imagining of of the spirit idea. You know, that you sh- you see the after the after you don't really actually see the afterlife you see that in between wow. um and then but you see the the beginnings and it was so the the katie who loves psychology was just like so excited yeah um because the concept of of a new soul being created and a lot of you know what was great is a lot of those adult type jokes in it mm-hmm. you know that the the smart smart jokes that like toy story had this edgier yeah, the ones. over the over the heads because honestly this is not a kid's movie it's packaged as a kid's movie in some ways because they're cute and cuddly and there's some silliness to it but it's really an adult movie yeah you know the way it's delivered and the message that's there is not for the kids yeah it's for us it's for us it's for as a parents or as adults or anyone as beings yeah um and i think you know that can easily get lost expect that could get lost too because being that it's on plus being that it's you know free yeah a part of your subscription people might just pass it off as a kid's movie it's a dramatic piece of art Mm -hmm. with humor that kids can get behind yeah and moments that they can understand because who doesn't love pizza i mean like (laughs) you know so but at the end of it, it was such the a message and all that, it's so good. I and, keep thinking about different you know, scenes of it, and it's just, it was so funny. Like, it's it's similar with, with Coco and Inside Out. Yeah. That, that deepness that those films brought to, yeah. to understanding your psyche or your afterlife or your this or your that. Well, or your I just think my, all of it. my favorite my favorite portion of it um that spoke to me too was the the land of lost souls basically and and you have these kind of monstrous looking things wandering around just muttering to themselves and what you you find out is it's basically their their soul is in this limbo of being stuck trying to focus on something and obsessing about something so whether it's like you know, should I, should I cut my hair? Should I cut my hair? Should I cut my hair? Even as simple as that. Um, or they said, you know, the, the idea of obsessing about something positive, but you obsess about it so much, you forget how to live. It's something that disconnects you from your ability to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can obsess about Toxic Crusader so much that you forget to be, you know, focused on the toys that you do have. Um, she has profound moments Touché. in real life. Um, this is not a learning moment for all of you at home. Just <laughs> <you know. laughs> um, but the idea that, you know, at all, at all of us at times find us obsessed with something positive or negative and, you know, it usually takes something to kind of jar us out and be like, okay, no, we need to pivot over here. And, um, or I need to remember to do this or yeah. something like that. And, um, but how how much it can be so so defeating if you get stuck there too long, yeah. you know. And that was just really profound uh, to have that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm really I'm so impressed on what they did on different levels for things and kind of switching back and forth between, you know, so existential and and mortal feeling, yeah. right? So so go watch Soul. Yes. Go do it if you got Disney Plus. Do it. You know. Yeah. No reason not to see it. It's a good movie. It's the better of the three. Like that we saw this weekend um totally take that time watch that film enjoy it uh discuss it feel it you know i want to watch it again so there you go like (laughs) Like, that's that's one of those ones i watch that again in a heartbeat yeah um and because i think there was just there is so much humor and there's so much to think about and and look at and laugh and still and just have that nice reminder and um in, in positive and negative aspects of our life, it was something that I can you can reflect on no matter who you are. I mean, obviously, we're not going through some sort of near death experience or something like that. But you can at some point have done something where you wish, you know, you could have done something differently or mm-hmm. you would learn from something. And it's 
it just is so profound and beautiful. So I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, totally. So go watch, go watch that. And while you're on plus two, Mandalorian's on there and we've, it's done. It's done for this year. It's done for this year. So, so, um, what did you think of the finale? Can we spoil it now? Cause it's been weeks. It's been a week and a half. If you were a true Mandalorian fan, (laughs) you would have watched it by now. You would have watched it that morning. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, well, do was, we have time to spoil it? What we do. We? We're good. A little okay. bit. Yeah, a okay. smidgen. I don't know. But what are your thoughts? I mean, I know we kind of talked about how emotionally attached I was, at least, last. So, so okay. So, how, how it is is that Grugo is with... Uh, Grogu. 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 Luba dooby dooby doo. Um, really? <laughs> Yeah, his, brother, his name should have been YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> you got Yoda, you got Yaddle. YOLO. No. Yola. Yola. Maybe that's his sister. Yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the child was taken by uh, the guy that also runs the boys. Uh, not runs the boys, but runs the seven. Um, right? So. Uh, Anyways. He was taken by uh, the death trooper. Are they death troopers? Yeah, I think that's what they said. Okay. Terrifying Moff ass Gideon. robots. Remember, I made, I made Iron, Iron Man. Man. <laughs> uh, that's my only complaint, honestly, about that. Was that it was just because well, so- when they especially when they all come back into the ship and you're like, holy crap, that just looks like a bunch of Iron Man robots. Right? That's the only thing I thought of. So, uh, but yeah, so they, they have to come up with a plan to save him and Mando collects a few people and they head off for the big, you know, the big showdown. Pew, pew. The right? Okay. Corral. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, I that. that episode was solid. I, 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 that's one of those ones where I want to watch it again. That, I know your, uh, your uh, friend wants to watch, um, the whole series and I think I might need to join you with that. Yeah, like yeah, watching my friend wants to just sit down and wants to watch the entire thing from end to yeah. So yeah. which will really suck for him, especially when season three comes and he still doesn't have it. Yeah, he might break down though. <laughs> After he watches a few episodes, he might be like, be no, like no. he goes home and be like, I'm ordering this. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that was a phenomenal episode. Uh, it was just amped up to to everything like well you didn't know what was going to happen right it was super suspenseful Mm -hmm. um mandalorian fighting was amazing i i know you love that he was kicking yes that was really cool well you know that's one thing i always watch about like the star wars movies and stuff like that and like everyone uses their their lightsaber or their laser swords and they you know they uh you know no one ever kicks they get caught in these battles and maybe it's not honorable to kick when you're locking swords but like i see those moments where i'm like you just need to kick that guy in the knee like <laughs> so when he was fighting he kicked he had his little beskar staff and he's battling with the against the the dark saber and he was actually kicking and like punching while he was battling and i was like yeah that's my dude like <laughs> Who well, cares you know about who cares if you break that man's knee? I was expecting to with uh, Gideon, you know, it he had that moment where he looked like he was really just like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm not going to risk my life because yeah. I have what I want type thing. But you're like, at the same time, it doesn't seem like him enough. Like, yeah. this tricky guy over here. And I'm so glad that that was the case, <laughs> that he was just like, he was really, still tricky. He was still tricky. And uh, <laughs> he was a bad guy to the end. Uh, so that was that was nice. Yeah. I was like can't be over this easy yeah because you, you're looking you're like he has a beskar staff you know that has to come into play he has to fight him yeah and and when it wasn't looking like that i'm like what the heck so yeah and then we had the big reveal you know and uh i got goosebumps and i kind of cried it was pretty cool it was pretty cool to see and it was like it was the idea too of you finally got the legend right i think his Gideon's face when you find out that it was when he heard that it was just one X-Wing yeah was awesome because yeah. you you want to know how he knew about this too yeah. like that face tells you that he had heard legend he had mm-hmm. heard about this and you're just like oh shit yeah you know so yeah no I, I'm just it's my favorite version of Luke too so like it was just so much cooler and like just oh my god it was amazing <sighs> 
So I, I'm really curious to see where season three will go. Um, you know, it's definitely going to be a wait. Um, and it's going to be curious to and see. And then you get the Boa Fett series as well. You get the Boa Fett series. You get, you know, get the Mando part three, like, and then the 50 other series is that's happening. You're going to be like, you won't Disney have to leave everything. Yeah. Because there's going to be so many Star Wars and Marvel series. <laughs> you won't have to even leave your home. So <laughs> apparently lockdown needs to go longer. <laughs> I'll take another five years, please. <laughs> as long as Disney Plus can keep producing. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them make stuff. I'll stay home. I'll stay home. <laughs> We're good. Nice. I know, but I think the series is worth it. It's totally worth it. It's an action adventure well, I, series. We that's... finally, I got my parents set up on it uh, when we watched that. It took me a few days, but then I helped my uh, my mom finally buy Disney Plus. I'm like, you, you, dad needs to watch this. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. you will love every moment of this. Like, do this. So, so uh, we've talked about enough um P- positively enough in general with Disney Plus. Yeah. She just bought the whole year right off the bat. Yeah. She's like, I've committed. We're doing this. <laughs> but you know what? It's got it's got pretty much all the Marvel films. It's got all the Star Wars films. It's got all the like the Disney catalog. Right. Like it a small price to pay to have some family entertainment that yeah. is safe for all ages. Yeah. You know, like, and it's got the Disney afternoon. I mean like gummy bears. They're bouncing right. here and there and everywhere. <sighs> yes. <laughs> mystery beyond compare they are the gummy bears i hate it like <laughs> i love it that could just work itself into a regular like statement and conversation you know ducktails woohoo <laughs> not ponytails or cottontails just ducktails <laughs> oh yes but you know out of everything in this year yeah it's been a weird unusual year but there's been some some fun shit like yeah. Mando. <laughs> Mando. <laughs> I mean... You know what? One thing that's sad is we really want to watch Tenet, but we can't find it yet. It's not up here. Yeah, like it's, it's really sad. to buy through Amazon, but I, I don't want to I'm not going to do that. So... Uh, On digital Amazon. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we can find it. But uh, There's always other things. I want to watch that Freaky. And, yeah. And uh, I know uh, Theo would not say in Dragon Ball wanted us to watch um, Fantasy Island, the Blumhouse mm-hmm. remake. Mm-hmm reboot well now we can Re-imagine. actually you know now we're done with christmas stuff and uh, we only got rudolph shiny new year to watch oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> hey so we got dungeons and dragons we have a dungeons and dragons game and it is fun it's adventure begins it's the adventures where it begins hasbro bought that out uh it's a starter kit for those like us that know nothing about dungeons and Dragons. so it's just one box where everything you can just play it right out of the box and it's super simple instructions we were able to figure out yeah. the first game without frustration yeah and it's all cooperative we all had fun yeah um, we were laughing we were yeah we were killing beasties we were kiddo can play it no problem yeah he, he was doing great and we had a blast it's a good family game yeah. Dungeons and dragons adventure begins from Hasbro. and it wasn't Gaming. expensive it was like 35 dollars up here yeah not um, even I don't something think, like yeah. that and you know so it really wasn't it was four up to four players but you all take turns being the dungeon master yeah um the DM. Yeah, no. It is Dungeon, not Dragon Master. Is it Dungeon? Dungeon Master. Master. Okay. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it could be either way. Yeah, um, I guess you want it to be the Dragon, Dragon Master. No, Dungeon Master sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> Whoopah! <laughs> um, um, <laughs> there you go, Theo. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah. Bunch, I'll be really disappointed if you don't reply somewhere with that gif. Yep. So, I... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, where are you going with this? Um, I just, I really had a lot of fun. Yeah, that's what we're going to do on New Year's Eve. We're going to, like, we're going to play Echo. Like, epic. A oh, few times. Oh, he found, um, like, Mandalorian quest music <laughs> to put on. So it was, okay. like, Star Wars questing. So it was awesome. Samuel Kim uh, makes uh, music. It's on Spotify. Samuel Kim. Uh, he, he reimagines themes uh, so we'd found a Carol of the Bells Mandalorian. So yeah. it's mixing Mando theme with Carol of the Bells. They also did an Imperial, Imperial March. March with Carol of the Bells. Well, then when I was scrolling through, I found that he had um, medieval Star Wars. <laughs> so we put that on 
while we played Dungeons and Dragons because it was done with all like flutey sounds and like drums. It was so awesome. Less of the actual Star Wars sounds, but then there was like a Mandalorian one in there too. And it just, it worked so well. And then we have a camp, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> fireplace, like uh, camp, a candle so it's a wood burning candle and it smells just like a campfire yeah. so we had that on the table too it was like we had camp yeah it was awesome yep so yeah. so it new is. year's eve that's our plan we're gonna we're gonna go on a quest we're going on a quest <laughs> you know there's some funny cards in there too there's a shrubbery card <gasps> that was the best card ever you had to name the shrubbery yep and it was so much fun. Like I was, Kiddo was laughing at me. He's just like, oh my God, mom, you're such a dork. And I being was that so it was sad. Hasbro, there was a My Little Pony card. Yes. That literally The Little Pony like, was drowning in the muck. Yeah. It literally looked like a My Little Pony. Yep. Uh, so. There was a, there was a one ring. Yeah. Uh, too. And, and it, the, the joke on there was, you know, don't worry. It only does one thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it was the, some of the cards were kind of like they were silly and ridiculous yeah. you know we got pooped on by seagulls yeah um thanks guys for making that choice yeah i know uh, you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> but uh no you know it was a lot of fun so kudos on hasbro for bringing dungeons and dragons to uh us layman yeah i'm very excited to play it, it again uh i i'm yeah i'm totally looking forward to that so yeah. Uh, that was definitely a highlight. Go check that out if you don't really know a lot about it. It's it's just pull and play. Like it's dump it out of the box and you're good to go. Yeah, you know. And it was oddly satisfying to yeah. defeat the the main villain at the end, the boss yeah. guy, and that was just super fun. Like with my liar liar pants on fire. I I for some reason felt like every monster that I just because I I killed two of the monsters. She burnt them. I burnt them. I don't know why I was obsessed with fire, but every every time I had the death I think blow, we burned all the monsters. We burned everyone. Yeah, we did. Yeah, you. Yeah, I burnt the you last burnt one. You burnt the last one too with your your leer, liar, yeah. Yeah. liar, liar. Everything got That's burnt. So, <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. That's how we roll, yo. Apparently, <laughs> boom. Okay, well. So, well, thank you, everyone. Have a happy and safe New Year. Yes. Uh, celebrate. You know, socially distanced. Please don't kiss anyone that's not in your social circle. <laughs> um, that goes anytime, actually. You know, consent is needed. You know, <laughs> cosplay is not consent. <laughs> Someone beside you isn't necessarily consent. Make sure you at least tap them on the corner shoulder and be like, hey, can we kiss? Get a yes. And if they say no, respect that. <laughs> um, you know, but don't worry about that until next year, because this year you shouldn't be around strangers. Yeah, just use your pillow like Jay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So on that lovely note, stay rad. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a wonderful and happy new year. And we'll see you in 2021. Thank you for listening. Want more rad content? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. And remember, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes!